Now, I think most of you are doing okay on the leftmost part and the rightmost part uh, because it feels quite similar to what we were doing in the first graph, right? You're like, oh, I'm getting bigger and bigger. So that means I get smaller. So you get this kind of shape sort of going, you know, getting really, really little like that. And then just to the left, you can see in here, because you're getting smaller on the original, what happens to the reciprocal? It gets bigger, right? It skyrockets. So that's why you can see, oh yeah, I have a vertical asymptote right there. That's exactly what I should expect, right? And the same thing happens in reverse on the left-hand side. Like so. So this is the shape, and I think people are pretty content that that's what's happening on the outside. The inside part between negative 2 and negative 3, that's the bit that's weirder. Okay? Now, let me just throw an idea at you. Right? Suppose from this x here, right? suppose I go up. I decide I want my graph to go up. Just, I'm just guessing. right? Now, my, oh, sorry. my question to you is, where is it going to go from here? And the answer is, nowhere. it's got nowhere to go, right? It's like, I, I can't break through here, because that's a vertical asymptote. It's like, that's the place where my calculator breaks. Um, it certainly can't go any higher, because remember, we shaded the reciprocal of a negative is negative as well, right? So going up turns out to be a really crummy option, right? The only other option is to go down. And that shouldn't surprise us, because just look closely in here. I can cheat here, because I've, I've got the screen, right? See. This is negative a quarter, right? And so we took its reciprocal, we got negative four, right? But then as we go toward the right here, see how these values are getting teeny, teeny, tiny, right? Like zero point, uh, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.01, and so on. Yeah, because the original is getting smaller, the reciprocal is getting bigger, but negative. Bigger, but negative, okay? So that's why this shape that you get down here, it just drops like a rock. Like so. Okay? It's kind of like a parabola, but there's an important difference. It's not a parabola. Here's why. Uh, this, this original shape here, this is a parabola. Right? Can someone tell me, where can I put a vertical line where the parabola stops? Where, was it, where will it stop? Well, on my graph, it stops like there. But I could keep going, couldn't I? Is there a place I can put this vertical line so it's like there and no further? No, you can't. Because think about domain, right? The domain of this guy is all real values of x. He can go forever, right? Now compare that to this shape here. See this guy here? It's like, you know, who's watching all the rings, right? This is Gandalf. You shall not pass. You can't go any further. That is fundamentally different to a parabola, right? It stops. It's got a limit. Okay, make sense? Okay. Now, put your pens down for a minute and look up. Let's um, let's draw some summary points from both of these. Okay. For example. You notice here, right? We just drew the shape. I didn't ask you to worry about the sign, positive, negative, but then we noticed it afterwards, right? We're like, ooh, that's kind of nice. There's a similar thing that we can observe about both of these, but it's not about the sign. It's about the symmetry. Do you notice this parabola, right? Every parabola is symmetrical, yeah? It has a line of symmetry, right? The parabola, the original, has symmetry. Look at the reciprocal, the blue graph. Do you notice it also has symmetry? Right? That shouldn't surprise us, because if you take the reciprocal of things over here, and they're exactly the same as the values over here, then symmetry like this in the original gives you symmetry in the reciprocal. So you know how we wrote this? The sign of the reciprocal matches the sign of the original. We can say this again. Sorry, I'm going to be really cheap. You can't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, it's not just the sign of the original that matches the reciprocal, it is the symmetry, right? So if you have a line of symmetry in your original function, then you will have a line of symmetry in your reciprocal function. In fact, um, have a look at the first function. Have a look at this one. Now, you know how you're like, Mr. Wu, that's cheating. You can just copy and paste stuff, okay? I'm about to ask you to do something that you can do, but I cannot, okay? Actually, no, I think I can. I want you to take your page. And I want you to go away. There we go. I want you to rotate your page. Now, how do I do this on here? I think I can. Yeah, technology. If I had this under a visualizer. Okay, here we go. All right, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I've got. All right, have a look at that. Can you turn your page 45 degrees? Turn your page 45 degrees. Should look like this, right? Now, look at the original function. 
in the way that we've arranged it, that original function right now, it looks like a horizontal line, doesn't it? Right? So it's symmetrical, isn't it? Like you could flip that horizontal line over, be the exact, exact same thing. Okay? Well, this symmetry here gives you a symmetry. Look at this hyperbola, right? Did you ever notice that? The hyperbola has a line of symmetry. It's just, it's sort of off at an angle, right? So the symmetry of the original gives us this symmetry of the reciprocal, okay? Um, another way we can say this is, let's go back to this guy, right? This line here, it has point symmetry. That's rotational symmetry, right? So you can take this guy, can I ask you now, you rotated 45 degrees, can you rotate all the way 180 degrees? Turn your page upside down, right? Now if you turn your page upside down, what you'll notice is, hold on a second, that is exactly the same shape. I'm going to do it here. Oh no, I can't. It only lets me go that far. <laughs> Technology. Is there, oh no, there's there, yeah, I've got to do that thing, right? There we go. There we go. Okay. You're like, oh, it's the same guy, right? That rotational symmetry in the original, there it is gives you a rotational symmetry in the reciprocal. Are you with me so far? <laughs> My brain is melting. Okay, let's come back. Now, what have we got? You can look at the sign, positive, negative. You can look at the symmetry, and then you can look for these particular values. What happens to the values? I'm not going to hold your hand with this one at all. Turn the page, have a look at this. What do you think this is, by the way? That's a cubic, okay. You don't need to know the equation. I can give you the equation in a minute so you can test it out with Desmos, but I want you to use all this knowledge we've developed. Think about the sign. Think about where this thing is positive and negative. Think about, does it have any kind of symmetry I can take advantage of? And lastly, I want you to think about where are the important values that I can use? Where's y equals zero? Where's y equals one? Where's y equals negative one? Look for those points, put them onto the page, see how far you can get. Off you go. Yeah.